it was a mess what happened here, but we're cleaning it up. I don't think that this is a reflection on the leader, it's a reflection on the body itself and the place where we've come in this country. Welcome back to America Decides. House Speaker Johnson is working to divert blame for the Republicans and their failed attempt at impeaching DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. He also says the fight isn't over yet. Mayorkas needs to be held accountable. The Biden administration needs to be held accountable. And we will pass those articles of impeachment. Uh, we'll, we'll do it on the next round. Jasmine Wright and Leanne Caldwell join us now. Jasmine is a politics reporter at Notice. Leanne is co-author of the Washington Post Early 202 and an anchor for Washington Post Live. Great to have you both here. Jasmine, we'll begin with you, but first I want to play Congressman Nels and what he had to say about this failed vote about the DHS secretary. I said, you know what? I said, if we'd have had George you know, Santos here, but you guys kicked him out. I didn't kick him out. You kicked him out. He'd have been a hard, you know, let's impeach him. So well, sometimes we got to be careful what we ask for. When they're pining for Congressman Santos to come back and be a vote, it's pretty indicative of where things stand among House Republicans. Uh, where do they go from here? You know, I think that that is a major question. Obviously, there are some on the far right of the Republican Party who want to see this bill brought to the floor again, who want to see uh, Mayorkas impeached. But of course, the votes just don't work in their favor, particularly on those arguments from not just moderates like Ken Buck, but also some in the far right party, former Freedom Caucus members who say that this does not set a good precedent for Republicans if Democrats are back in the majority come 2024, November. So I think that there's a major question of how this goes forward. But clearly, there are many, many, many Republicans in that party and in, co in the Congress who are just so upset with Mayorkas and what's happening on the border, who want to see this bill fulfilled. But can they get there? I mean, I think that that's the major question. Leanne, great to have you here. What's your take on that? I read Congressman Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, his op-ed in The Wall Street Journal, a Republican saying he's against this move for impeachment. Are some Republicans listening to him about that argument that if, let's say, former President Trump or Nikki Haley wins the presidency as a Republican, that they're going to face constant possible impeachments in 2025? Yeah, well, obviously, that was what Gallagher is most concerned about. Um, he said that uh, Republicans made the same arguments when Democrats were impeaching Trump uh, when Trump was in office. And now that Republicans are also lowering the bar for impeachment. The interesting thing about Gallagher is he not only voted against this, and he said that he has been a no for a long, long time on this. This was no surprise to leadership. Um, but he also took his argument really publicly in the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, which has a, sometimes a more conservative readership and where establishment conservatives read the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal. But my sources on Capitol Hill are saying they're confident that if Johnson brings this forward again, that it will pass. Because if a member who there are several members who did not want to vote for this, but they already voted for it. So it's going to be very hard for them to switch their opinion to vote, their vote to vote against it. So Republicans are confident, but there is a lot of concern among some Republicans and many Democrats that this is just opening the door and weakening the meaning of impeachment. I'd like to turn to President Biden. He's on the campaign trail today raising some money, I believe, in New York. He just got through Jasmine, the South Carolina Democratic primary, won a sweeping victory. Right. But there's a real question even though he won such a, a big win in South Carolina, whether he has the support of black voters nationwide at the level he needs. You wrote an article for Notice uh, with the headline, Biden has lost support among black voters. His allies blame misinformation. Coming out of South Carolina, what's your reporter's assessment of where President Biden stands with his one of those key coalitions. Yeah. I think if you were to talk to the Biden campaign, which I do pretty frequently, they would say that President Biden is coming out strong. That resounding, decisive win that he uh, notched in South Carolina was indicative of the fact that black supporters do support him in re-election. They said that they um, increased uh, black voter support in South Carolina by like 13 or, or, or more percent. So they're saying that they're really uh, on top of that coalition. But when I talk to other 
black voters in this country, they don't really say the same thing. In fact, I talked to a, a two separate groups of black women who met with the Biden campaign, who basically said that if they don't really uh, redirect their efforts and really talk to this disillusioned group, that's not just black men, but it's also black women, that they're going to lose that section. Now, they asked for a couple different things, including um, more black women at the senior level, also messaging, but also things like having fun campaign merch. So it depends on who you talk to. I think that the campaign is way more um, confident than what you hear from black voters on the ground who frankly say things like President Biden hasn't fulfilled his uh, student loan promises. President Biden hasn't done enough on the economy. And that's where that kind of misinformation part gets into. Because when you talk to Democrats on the Hill, they say that that has been pushed by Republicans, really trying to misinform the public that Biden really needs most. But again, it just really uh, is going to faction on how well the Biden campaign can actually talk to this vital, vital group of voters. Leanne, on another front related to President Biden and his campaign, immigration, border security, I asked Weijia Jang about this a few minutes ago. If Congress continues to have paralysis on this issue, what are Democrats on Capitol Hill telling you about what they want the president to do to address this issue, not only for himself politically, but for themselves? So there are some Democrats, like Joe Manchin, who wants to call a national emergency on the border. Um, there are others who are saying that the president should uh, pass executive orders about the border, potentially. Uh, but really, the politics of immigration, Democrats at this point think, are are, could could place the blame a little bit on Republicans because they are walking away from a deal on to secure the border. Um, of course, this is a deal that, while Republicans say uh, would only make the situation worse, um, is the most conservative border policies that we've seen in at least three decades, potentially a lot longer. So, um, and there's some concerns about in the Republican side too that they will get blamed. For, for walking away for this deal. So there is a lot of internal politics happening when it comes to the border where Republicans were confident that they win on this issue. President Biden or President Trump thinks that he wins on this issue. That's why he wants the issue to remain and that's why he does not want a deal on the border. Um, but down ballot, it could become a lot more complicated. And, and very quickly, from both of you in about just a few seconds, uh, <laughs> Speaker Johnson, to lose all these votes, how, what's his political capital right now with his own members? I mean, I think it looks shaky, but the bottom line is that he's having the same problem as McCarthy, which is that he is not the de facto leader of Republicans. Former President Trump is, and they fear former President Trump, and they don't fear Speaker Johnson, and so that is going to be something that he's going to have to contend with over and over and over again. Leanne, quickly. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of concern about a vacuum of leadership of Speaker Johnson. Um, but I will say, moving, looking a little bit forward, if the Senate does pass Ukraine funding, there is no way Johnson can bring it up. He will most likely lose his job. Hardball politics. Jasmine Wright and Leanne Caldwell, thank you for being here. We appreciate it.